the essence of the Bohr-Heisenberg picture was that the electron was a particle. However, there was a, a certain amount of uncertainty with regards to where the particle was. Now, one day, Heisenberg was so paralyzed, worrying about all these problems, that he took a walk in the park. Outside his institute, there's a famous park, and late at night, he walked through the park wondering, how can it be? How can it be that you don't quite know where the electron is? And then, in a flash, he understood. Because to understand where an electron is, you have to look at it. To look at it, you have to shine a light on it. But when you shine a light on it, that disturbs where the electron is. So the very fact of observing an object changes its location. Therefore, he realized that uncertainty is an essential part of his picture. Heisenberg noemt zijn nieuwe inzicht de onzekerheidsrelatie. Het stelt op een elegante wiskundige manier dat hoe meer je weet over de positie van een deeltje, des te minder je kunt weten over de snelheid en richting ervan. Ook het omgekeerde geldt. Hoe meer je weet over de snelheid en richting van een deeltje, des te minder je kunt weten over de plaats ervan op een gegeven moment. En toen hij eindelijk had dat idee, he realized dat hij de Schrodinger picture met de Bohr-Heisenberg picture to give us the modern day theory of the quantum principle. In other words, the electron is a point particle, but you don't know quite where it is. And the probability of finding it at any given point is given by a wave, the Schrodinger wave. So we now have this beautiful synthesis of waves and particles. Heisenberg's principle indeed is very, very non-intuitive. Frankly speaking, I'd call it bizarre, but you can see it at work. Suppose I have a laser beam here. And I use laser beam because that's right, but I could use any other light for that matter. And I make here an opening, a slit, a vertical slit. And here goes the laser beam right through the slit. Light goes on, light goes on. And here I project this onto this wall or a screen, projection screen, and what do I see? Well, you see exactly what you predict. You see here this laser spot from this beam. But now I'm going to make this vertical slit narrower and narrower and narrower. What now are you going to see? Well, you're going to see exactly what you predict. You're going to cut off the edges of the circle, and the spot gets narrower and narrower and narrower. But now you come to the point that this narrow slit, say, is only one hundredth of an inch wide. And now Heisenberg's principle comes in. Because now you know so precisely in the horizontal direction where the light is, that as it emerges from this slit, the direction of the light is no longer determined, according to Heisenberg's principle. And so now what you're going to see, it's going to spread out in the horizontal plane. And therefore, what you're going to see on this projection screen, it's going to get wider. Extremely non-intuitive. Because what am I doing? I'm making the slit narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower. And what do you see ultimately? That the beam horizontally becomes wider and wider and wider and wider and wider and wider and wider. Now that is very non-intuitive. But it's the way the world works. According to the quantum theory, even the most bizarre events have a probability of taking place. There's a certain probability that I will dissolve and simply rematerialize on the other side of that brick wall. Now, you may say to yourself, well, well, that's impossible. We've never seen anyone dissolve and rematerialize on the other side of brick walls. But we actually give this problem to our graduate students. To our PhD candidates, we ask them to calculate, using the quantum theory, what is the probability that you will find yourself on the other side of a brick wall? Now, to tell you the truth, you would have to wait longer than the lifetime of the universe for such an event to take place. So you don't have to worry. Your atoms are not going to dissolve, and you're not going to rematerialize on the other side of brick walls. But there is a probability you can calculate for that event happening. And then you can ask yourself the question, do I understand it? I don't even know what that means, understanding. I have problems with that. Physics describes things, describes phenomena. And as long as 
it is predictable. As long as that formalism applied in a certain situation gives you the right answer, who cares? Who cares what the meaning is of understanding? I think I leave that up to philosophers. And I think they don't, they don't have a clue either, of course, but they... Sommige fysici weigeren te accepteren dat de kwantummechanica de volledige subatomaire wereld in kaart brengt. De beroemdste van hen is Albert Einstein. Quantum mechanics is very worthy of regard. But an inner voice tells me that this is not the true Jacob. As a theory yields a lot. But it hardly brings us any closer to the secret of the old one. In any case, I am convinced that he doesn't throw dice. He couldn't believe that there were big patches of the world about which we could not know. And his idea from early on in his life, all the way to the end of his life, was that there ought to be a set of equations, deterministic, causal, ordered, formulated in such a way that they could tell us everything about a future in terms of everything about the present. And quantum mechanics wouldn't allow it. He couldn't stand that idea. 